Welcome to part 5 of this week's online lecture. In part 5 we will continue our discussion of the anharmonic oscillator model. Let's have a look at the effects of anharmonicity. Because the energy levels are getting closer and closer together, the specific selection rule that delta V is equal to plus or minus 1 breaks down. It means that we can see a transition from say V equals 0 to V equals 2 or V equals 0 to V equals 3. These overtones become allowed. But the thing is though, the transitions where delta V, the change in the vibrational quantum state, is greater than 1 are very much weaker. The way to think about this is that anharmonicity is a small perturbation to the harmonic problem. The harmonic problem rigorously had a selection rule that delta V was equal to plus or minus 1. That selection rule gets broken down because of this small perturbation, but because it is a small perturbation it means that the intensities of anything that breaks the harmonic rule are much weaker. Hopefully, intuitively, you can feel that. This happens a lot in science where you have selection rules. We refer to transitions that break these selection rules as forbidden transitions. But if they are forbidden, why do they occur? And this is of course because the assumptions about those transitions don't really hold in the real world. The harmonic oscillator doesn't really hold in the real world because molecules are anharmonic. We call them forbidden because they break that ideal model. But whenever you have a forbidden transition, I'm sure you will have noted that the intensities associated with forbidden transitions are very much weaker. There has also been a shift in the energy levels. The energy levels are getting closer and closer together as we approach the dissociative limit. For an anharmonic oscillator, delta V is arbitrary. We can have values larger than 1 but the intensities of the transitions where delta V is larger than 1 are very much smaller. We can solve our transition moment and determine what the intensities are. They are non-zero but they are very much smaller. So we will get more transitions than a single peak. We are going to get a transition from V equals 0 to V equals 2. It is going to be at a frequency at approximately twice the fundamental frequency. The transitions where delta V is greater than 1 are known as overtone bands. If we go from V equals 0 to V equals 1, we get what we call our fundamental band. If we go from V equals 0 to V equals 2, we have our first overtone. And if we go from V equals 0 to V equals 3, we have our second overtone and they get steadily weaker and weaker in terms of intensity. So you can see why the first overtone will appear in our spectrum at approximately twice the frequency of the fundamental band but not exactly twice the frequency because in fact the levels are getting closer and closer together. It will be slightly less than twice the frequency of the fundamental. So if we know what the fundamental frequency is and we know what the first overtone frequency is, we can get information about the anharmonicity. You can imagine, because we know the energies from the Schrodinger solution of the Morse potential, we can use the information about the frequencies of the fundamental and the first overtone to determine what the anharmonicity constant is for that molecule. The reason why those intensities are getting smaller for the overtones is because the transition moments are getting smaller. I want to now look at hot bands which also have smaller intensities but for an entirely different reason. Here is our familiar fundamental band as we go from V equals 0 to V equals 1. However, we could have a transition from V equals 1 to V equals 2 and this would be the first hot band. We could also have a transition from V equals 2 to V equals 3 and this would be the second hot band. The intensities of the hot bands are very much weaker than the intensity of the fundamental band. But the reason for this is that the population of V equals 1 and V equals 2 states, which are the initial states for the first and second hot bands respectively, 
are very much smaller than the population of the vehicle's zero state, which is the initial state of the fundamental band. And for something like HCl, or carbon monoxide at room temperature, the intensities are absolutely minute, so you generally don't see them. You'd have to be at much higher temperatures to see the hot bands, or you'd have to have a molecule where the frequency is much smaller, like in a heavier diatomic. If you have a much heavier diatomic, such that, say, the fundamental frequency is just a couple of hundred wave numbers, then yes, you could see the hot bands. However, there will be a difference in the response of the spectrum of the hot bands compared to the overtones as we change the temperature. As we increase the temperature, the populations of the excited vibrational states will increase at the detriment of the population of the vehicle's zero state. This means that the intensities of the hot bands will increase and the intensity of the fundamental band will decrease as we increase the temperature. This behaviour is not the same with the overtones. With overtones, the initial state is always V equals zero. So the intensities of the overtones will also decrease with increasing temperature in the same way that the intensity of the fundamental band decreases with increasing temperature. So what will all this look like? If we were to look at a fairly large spectral region, this is the kind of idealized spectrum we would see for a diatomic molecule. We can have a hot band, say, for V equals 1 to V equals 2, with a small intensity. Notice it is at a frequency smaller than our fundamental band, and that is because the gap between the V equals 1 and V equals 2 levels is smaller than the gap between the V equals 0 and V equals 1 levels. So therefore the hot band occurs at a frequency smaller than that for the fundamental. The fundamental band occurs at a frequency of approximately nu e. The first overtone will occur at a frequency that is approximately twice that of the fundamental. And the third overtone will occur at a frequency that is approximately three times that of the fundamental. But if you do the maths, you will see that in fact the first overtone is slightly less than twice the fundamental and the second overtone is slightly less than three times the fundamental. If we've got a molecule where the anharmonicity constant is very small then our fundamental frequency nu zero is approximately equal to nu e. But if it is not small or if you just want to be accurate then our fundamental frequency, which is rigorously defined as the energy of the V equals 1 minus the energy of the V equals 0 states, is equal to nu e minus 2 nu e chi e. So this is the equation which enables me to convert nu 0 to nu e, or vice versa. Nu 0 is equal to nu e minus 2 nu e chi e. Remember, this was our spectrum for carbon monoxide in a solution of carbon tetrachloride. And we have our fundamental band here, which is the V equals 0 to V equals 1 transition. And we could see it was occurring at 2170 wave numbers or so. So this observation was due to the fundamental band. It is not surprising that we can't see any additional features such as hot bands and overtones. We are not looking at a spectral range large enough to see the overtones, and the first hot band is probably swamped underneath the fundamental band. The fundamental band is a fairly broad band, and the first hot band would be centered at approximately 50 wave numbers less than the fundamental band. So given that it has a much smaller intensity, it would be completely swamped, and so the only feature you will see is the fundamental band. In part one, I showed you these two figures for carbon monoxide in the gas phase. The one on the left is for a measurement at low resolution, and we get this kind of feature appearing, where you've got two peaks separated by some gap that I said is roughly 55 wave numbers. At high resolution, we've got these two bands of lines appearing, and the lines are almost equally spaced. So we need to explain these two features, and the reasons why we get this additional structure. 
Notice that the spacing between the lines in the high resolution measurement is of the same order as for the carbon monoxide rotational structure. You'd be right in guessing that this structure is due to the rotational structure of the molecule. We have the selection rule for the harmonic oscillator, which is that delta V is equal to plus or minus 1. But the molecules are not just vibrating, of course. They are rotating as well. They do have rotational energy in addition to their vibrational energy. And at the same time as you excite a vibration, you will necessarily have to change the rotational energy of the molecule. Because the rotational selection rule, delta J is equal to plus or minus 1, still needs to be adhered to. It doesn't matter if we are looking at a vibrational transition or indeed an electronic transition. The rotational energy of the molecule will also have to change or at least we have to conserve the angular momentum when we have a transition. We cannot conserve the angular momentum with a pure vibrational transition. That is a transition that doesn't change its rotational state because the vibration in a diatomic doesn't involve any angular momentum so the angular momentum of the photon cannot go into the vibration it can only go into the rotation because that is the only thing in the diatomic that has angular momentum this is the end of part five of this week's online lecture please continue on to part six